Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Shout hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Shout hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Sing hallelujah, amen. Lord, I worship you. I give you glory. I give you praise this day. Because you are God that never fails. And your power never reduces. Your anointing never reduces. Your grace never reduces. Your mercy never shrink. And because all power in heaven and earth belongs to you, Thank you because you have decided to bless some people today through this revelation. And I believe and I know I'm one of them. And everyone that will be joining right now, those that will be watching on YouTube, I pray for you that the anointing of the Holy Spirit will find you where you are. The anointing that breaks generational yoke. The anointing that makes people to do exceptional great things will rest upon you. The anointing that makes men do exceptionally great things will rest upon you. In the name of Jesus, I welcome everyone today. My name is Adura Lere Oluwagbomi. I would like to introduce myself differently today. My name is Adura Lere Oluwagbomi, one of the spiritual sons of Joseph Ayobabalola. Today, mark the 62nd years that the great apostle, Apostle Joseph Ayobabalola, passed on to glory. The event happened on July 26th, 1959. It was on Sunday afternoon. And today I want to share with you, you know, I was praying on the mountain. I was praying on a mountain about three years ago in the night when God said to me, said, I want you to research the life of Apostle Joseph Ayobabalola and write books on it. And that's what I've been doing, you know, researching his life and writing books, you know, that will change people's life from it. And what I plan to discuss today are the 12 major instructions that the Almighty God gave to Ayobabalola that made him great. You know, each time I speak about Babalola, I'm speaking about you. Because my own orientation is when we study the life of heroes, we should use their learning, we should use their experiences, you know, to shape our own life. So when I write about Babalola, I'm not just writing about Babalola, I'm writing about you. I'm not just writing about the instruction God gave to him. I'm also telling you the instruction God gives to you. The cheapest way to succeed in life is to study the life of men that have succeeded. And if you are watching, and I know some people are watching, and I know some will watch later, I want you to type it and share this post. It's a message to millions of people. The cheapest way to succeed in life is to study the life of people that have been successful. And today, I'll be sharing with you 12 important messages, 12 important instructions that the Almighty God gave to Apostle Joseph Ayobabalola, what he did with those instructions, and how his obedience to those instructions made him powerful and made him great. Karima dia sakadi keleke shiri kadi sakada. Karima dia dase keli kalia dakada. One of the things that happened to Ayobabalola the moment he wanted to die. He died this very hour. He died around 
around 4 15 p.m in 1959 on july 26 exactly this hour that is when it passed on to glory let me share with you from documentation we've written books act of power i've written about three books on apostle joseph and, blah, blah, blah. and i have a, a, some other books that talk about him but let me share with you how apostle joseph and your babalola pass on to glory before i reveal to you the 12 instructions that God gave to him. Apostle Joseph Fire Babalola needs no introduction to my understanding. He was the apostle that God sent to Africa when Africa was in utter darkness and his appearance in African scene made light to begin to shine. And God used him mightily in deliverance, in healing, in special miracles, not just ordinary miracle, in special miracle, raising dead, raising many dead people back to life and burning different idols and making Africa say, Oh, to return back to God. He served God for 30 years, and today mark the 62nd years that he passed on to glory. But how did Ayobabalola die? Let me start from there, and I will tell you. 12 things that God told him that he did that made him to be great. And I will be relating it with your own personal experience because it is useless talking about Baba La when it doesn't affect you. It is useless talking about the man that have died 62 years when that revelation doesn't touch you. I don't do such thing. I'm doing it for you, not for him. Kalia da masi kale shekede. Regardless where you are in the face of the earth, I, I read a place this afternoon that when Babala was about to die, he was praying for all the nations of the world. And I was asking God, what is he praying for? And the Lord told me, I saw the map of the world and I saw apostolic commission. The Lord said he's going to be raising apostles across the world that we continue the same commission that he gave to Ayobabalola. If you are a man of God, if you are a passion for God, Karema Dasi, I pray for you. I saw apostolic commission on the map of the world. And God said, he's raising apostles in this generation that we continue the same commission that he gave to Ayobabalola. I pray for you and myself that we will be the vessel God is going to use in our generation. We will be the vessel god is going to use in our generation my spirit is still praying for somebody when apostle joseph ayobabala was about to die god in his mercy did not reveal the secrets to any prophet even though he was surrounded by many prophets nobody knew how and when it happened i pray for you the enemy will not have access to the secrets of your life so on july 25th he traveled from Ibadan, 1959, July 25th, 1959. He traveled from Ibadan to Ede. Ede was the place where Baba Abiyye, Prophet Akande, is at that time. They were planning a, a good woman convention. So Baba Allah came to that place and he wanted to be part of that convention. So he came on 25th. He, he joined them in prayer. And on Sunday 26th, after the Sunday service, around 3 p.m., he went into his private room. And this is what transpired. I'm going to read from a book. This is exactly how Joseph Ayobabalola died. Not, <clears throat> not long after his discussion with Esso Akande, Esso Akande is popularly known as Baba Abiyye in Ede, something strange began to happen. The room where Babalola was staying began to shake and vibrate as if experiencing a tremor. All the people present noticed this vibration as the Holy Spirit began to react to liberate the spirit of that great man from this death field, sin ravaged world. There were vibrations of the electric current and dynamic charges of the great power of God in that house. It is that spiritual reaction on the physical structure that produced the vibration and shakings of the world. Then all of a sudden, there was a great shout from Ayobabalola, I, 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 three times, as if, say, God the Father, 
Son and Holy Spirit, we shook the entire house like an earthquake. And split second, the man was gone like lightning. The young man who was with him, ministering to him, quickly ran to inform the elders and other ministers what had happened. All the men that enter into the room where his lifeless body was laid fell on their faces. Karema disi kili shakada. Dili mama siya kaleke de keleke didi. Anointing never dies. And I pray for you where you are. Everything that is standing with you that is not of God, I command the fire of God to separate you from the evil you have known in the name of Jesus. Everyone that enter into his room, the moment he passed on to glory, they were anointed men, they all fell on their faces. As the people rushed from everywhere to his room, after this, it was a shock to discover that the man was no more. His associates immediately gathered Babajide, Odutola, Esu Akande, and they started a series of prayer asking God to return Babalola to them. As the prayer went on, after about 30 minutes to one hour, God opened the eyes of one of them, and he saw a vision. In the vision, he saw Babalola standing before the mighty gate of heaven, and the gate opened, and the host of heaven stood to welcome him with songs and jubilation. Thereafter, he entered through the gate of heaven, and he was received inside and laid his sword at the feet of Jesus. The Lord then told the prophet that Babalola cannot come back to them again as they wanted, because the heaven have already received him. I'm feeling the anointing. Kare Mashadia Dase. Idika Lia Madi Sikele Shika Dia Kade Kedilima. Madisila Kalia Mashadia Kade Kedikele Masiada. Irilima, Ikili, Dada Masadia Daka Daka de Kele Shikele. He was gone. He could not come back. Karema di Sikili Shada Daka Selie De Kede. And I'm seeing lost hope written boldly in some people's life. Every area of your life that you think it is over, I declare hope is coming. Life is coming. Restoration is coming. That is how Joseph and your Babalola pass on to glory. They pray. God did not answer. The gate of heaven was opened to the great man and he was received. He started well. He finished well. I pray for you. I pray for myself. You have started well. You will also end well. The beauty of our Christian life is to end well, not to start well. To end well. You will end well. So today, my mission is, why was this man so great, even in death? I don't know him physically. I've saw him in vision. I pray some of you begin the covenant that work for your Babalola will begin to work for you. The covenant, the miracle producing covenant that work for your Babalola will begin to work in your life. And I study him. In studying him, I've written three books. The first one, I just brought one here, Act of Power, 15 Secrets of Apostle Joseph and your Babalola Power and Success in Ministry. The second book I wrote is Testimony of Grace, 200 Amazing Facts on Ayo Babalola. And the third one that I just finished last month is 21 life-changing lessons that I learned from studying Joseph Ayo Babalola. From all of these three books, what my spirits want to share with the global audience are the instructions that God gave to Ayo Babalola. If you are going to be successful, you must be ready to receive instruction from the Lord. The Bible describes anyone that despises instruction as a fool. Oh, you want to hear the voice of God? Yes, God will speak to you through his voice. But not every time that God speaks to you that you will like what he says. I know some people are watching. I want you to type. It is not every time that God speaks to you that his voice will make you happy. That's one thing that I've learned about instructions. God will tell you to do things that are not pleasant to you. Many times God will tell you to do things that are difficult for you to achieve. But you know, whenever God speaks, his only expectation is one, for you to obey. 
And that is what Babalola did. He was a man that always received instruction from God, meaning that his spiritual ear is, is always open. But not just that, he was also a man that always obeyed the voice of the Spirit. And I want you to tie. You know, we love to celebrate miracle. That is one, the one I did last year. I was just alone in a bush like this. I did, I said, 21 notable miracles in Joseph Ayobabalala ministry. I posted it on Facebook. About 20,000 people have watched. We love miracles. But what is the secret of that miracle? Because I'm seeing on the map of the world, apostolic commission. God is raising apostles, women apostles, men apostles, young men apostles. But what is the secret that can make you become what God has planned for you? What was the secret of Joseph and your Babalala? I can, I've written 15 secrets. But if you ask me to summarize, to reduce all those secrets to one, I will simply reduce it to his capacity to obey what God says. That is what I will reduce everything to, the capacity to simply do what God asks you to do. Let me share 12 with you. Not waste your time. The first one. When God called him in 1928, he was 24 years old. He was a boy. Born in 1904. And God called him at the age of 24. He was a young boy. He just finished learning goes a uh, blacksmith. And God, he was... After that, he learned a trade, he was driving, you know, all these stream roller, working with people that construct a road. And it was there on September 25, September 25, 1928, the Holy Spirit ministered to him and said to him on September 25, that when you go home, you must begin to read the book of Psalms from the first chapter to the last chapter in the book of Psalms, there are 150 chapters there. The Holy Spirit told him, the Lord placed it in his heart to be reading the whole book of Psalms every day. That was the first major instruction that God gave to Ayobabalola. And he obeyed, be paying attention to the instruction and obedience. Because every instruction you obey, we may God speak to you the more. When you say God is not speaking to you, check the last, check your level of obedience. He has told you many things. You have not obeyed any. And you are saying God is not speaking to you. It is your fault. The first thing God told him, read the book of Psalm from chapter 1 to chapter 150 every day. And he did that for 15 consecutive days from September 25. 1928 up to the day god began to speak audibly to him you know the first leading it was the voice of the spirit in his mind go and begin to read your bible and he obeyed every day from day one day two day three he was reading the book of psalm i'm sure many of us have not done it but i've also been under the usher of the holy spirit to read the book of psalm and the day i read the book of psalm it took me about 12 hours from morning to evening, I knew it was achievable, and he read it. And when God is leading you to the world, it means there is a reservoir of power that he has prepared for you, but you cannot access it without the world. I want you to pay attention to that. When you have sudden desire for the word of God, it's because there is a reservoir of power that God has prepared for you. But you cannot assess that power without the word. You cannot, every power you assess without the word is fake. It's from the devil. So God laid it in his heart to be reading the book of Psalms. This is before he was called. You know, the more you read, and there is a, a close link between reading the word and hearing the audible voice. When he began to read the book of Psalms consecutively for 15 days, on September, on October 9th, 1928, he began to hear the voice of God, the audible voice, not in his spirit, but in his natural ear. That is what reading the word of God does to you. It gives you capacity to hear God audibly. 
the more you read the written word, the more you hear the audible voice. I see 12 people watching right now. And if indeed you are with me, and I thank God for your life, and I know you are with me, I want all of you to type that statement. The more you read the written word of God, the more you hear the audible voice of God. Oh, even if you miss everything, that is going to change your life forever. The more, I want you to type that, the more you read the written word of God, the more you hear the audible voice of God. Some people have not typed. I need you to type. I want you to enter into your spirit. That is your take home. That was the first instruction God gave to Babalola. Go and read the book of Psalm. He did. And what followed, God began to speak audibly to him. When you begin to read the audible, the written word of God, you began to hear the audible voice. So when you complain, God is not speaking to me, check the level of how you are reading the one he has written to you. It's a letter. You have not read the letter he read to you and you want to hear the voice of God. It doesn't work that way. So the first instruction is go and read your Bible. And the same instruction is what God is speaking to you. Oh, you want to walk with God. You can only find his way in his word. Karim Adisi, Ilishakada. That is what God was telling Babalola. I want to walk with you. But the only way to discern my way is the word. So prepare if you are going to walk with God. You must be prepared to be a friend of the written word of God. The second instruction God gave to him. In 1928, in October, the first day, at about 12 midday, he heard a voice. He said, leave this walk or you die. Mm. He said, leave the walk that you are doing. As at that time, Ayobabalola was the leader of about 86 workers. 86 workers were working under him. He was the supervisor as the stream roller walking along Akurele Road. And the voice told him, leave this walk or you leave the land of the living. You know, many times when God calls men with apostolic mantle or apostolic commission, it always comes with a threat to their life. I'm going to say that again. You know, so God allows some people to combine their ministerial assignment with other work. But for some people especially, if you are an apostle and you are a prophet, for those two people, when God is calling you many times, it's just the, min the, the ministerial assignment, the kind of mantle God wants to release you, cannot allow you to combine your work with some other work. So God, the second instruction God gave to Babalola is, leave your work or you die. Yes, God still speaks that way today. God is still calling some people, say, leave your work and focus on me alone. Leave your work or you die. That was the instruction. He said, it's either you leave this work or you leave the land of the living. Guess what? He obeyed. I believe almost everybody will obey that. But in obeying that thing, I want you to put some things into consideration. This is a young man of 24. This was his first major work where he was earning four, four pounds. As at that time, Nigeria was spending pounds. Four pounds. It was getting four pounds every day and when god told him to leave here was a temptation his boss his immediate boss when he returned his resignation letter his immediate boss told him not to go he even promoted him gave him double of his salary can you reject that offer for god's sake and babalola said even if you thanks 10 of what if you give me 100% double of what I'm getting, I'm not staying again. So the devil gave him a promotion in his place of work, but God is saying, leave the promotion, leave the work and focus on me. So he paid that sacrifice and follow God. You know, if you are going to be something with God, there are something you have to sacrifice as well. Just like me, my passion is to become a professor of criminology. I've written, published many papers and books. And God said, I want you in the ministry, not in the academics. So I don't know what God is telling you. I don't know what God is telling you. 
Maybe God has also been telling you, leave certain things for me. Your own could be a banking job, getting a fantastic salary. And God is saying, leave that for me. Your own could be that you are experiencing promotion academy. And God is saying, but I want, I, I have a different assignment for you. But Balala was enjoying his work as a stream ruler. But God said, leave that work and follow me. Is God calling you into a full-time ministry? Here are two lessons that I learned from Ayoba Balala. He did not say, how am I going to feed my, my family? How am I going to become someone in life? Do you even know what he did? He saved 14 pounds. That is what he saved for four months. He saved 14 pounds when he was working. And immediately God called him. He packed the whole money, 14 pounds, and gave it to his spiritual father, Fakunda. He said, God, I'm depending on you alone because I know you can. You can be my sustainer. If God is calling you into ministry, a full-time ministry, don't let it be when God begins to destroy everything you have before you yield to that. I've seen people in my own family, because they didn't yield to that call on time, and they wasted many properties, many lives, some lost their children, some lost their wife. That was the same thing God told Baba I said, you had to listen to me. He said, I, you obeyed my voice and go into full-time ministry or you die. Some of you are dying right now, losing your job, losing your head, simply because you have not done what God said you should do. So he obeyed. He left the job. Despite the double offer promotion given to him, he rejected it and followed God. You wanted to know why God promoted him? Because he sacrificed all that matters to him. God will use you mightily when you are ready to sacrifice what matters to you. God is going to use you mightily when you are ready to sacrifice your future plan. When you are ready to sacrifice what matters to you, what matters to why your Babalala, he let it go for God. The third instruction God gave him is that God told him in the middle of that uh, October, that October 1928, the, the third, he said, the Lord told him, go and fast for four days. Mm. We are getting closer a little bit. When God instructs you to go and fast, it could be for one day, it could be for two days, but for your Baba lies for four days. And this is a man that have never fasted for four days and all of that. But he obey. You know, Karema Dasi Kalisha Kadekedele. Empowerment is in obedience. I want you to type that. Empowerment is in obedience. If you cannot obey God, you cannot be empowered by God. So he obey. After four days, he was expecting to eat. He was planning for the next meal. And the Holy Spirit showed up again. He said, you are not permitted to eat now. That you must extend your fasting to seven days. Has the Holy Spirit also told you something you should do? But you find it difficult. Many times when God speaks, it will be difficult for you to obey. But the empowerment, the engracement is in obeying. So after four days, the Holy Spirit showed up. You are not permitted to eat. Fast for three more days. And he obeyed. Hmm. But this is what happened. On the seventh day of his fasting, after he obeyed, Jesus Christ was the one that appeared to him in his room. His room was flooded with light, and Jesus came in the company of an angel. And it was in that encounter that God told him many things, and God gave him empowerment. God will never ask you to do anything that will not be of benefit for you. God told him to fast for four days. After four days, he said, seven days, and he obeyed. At the end of the whole show, God gave him power. When God is asking you to fast, please always obey. When the Holy Spirit is ministering to you to go and pray, it's for your good. Always obey. When you miss God's instruction, you have missed a miracle. I want you to type that. When you miss God's instruction, you have missed a miracle. When you miss God's instruction, you have missed a miracle. Had it been Baba Allah said, oh, four days is okay for me. He will have missed the miracle of an encounter with Jesus Christ. Mm. 
you miss a miracle when you despise instruction. I was terribly sick about nine years ago, and I met and I went to meet a pastor, a prophet. And when I got to that prophet, he told me, he said, at that time, I wasn't a Christian, I was just going to church. You know, some of you, some of us are like that. We are not Christian, we are just going to church. So when I met the pastor, he said, go and fast for 14 days. You know, I was a son of a prophet. And using my own wisdom, despising the instruction of the man of God, I fasted for seven days. I said, this is okay. And at that time, every prophecy, every prophet was saying, Boy, we see death around you. Go and pray. We see death. So after I fasted for seven days, I said, that is okay. So I began to eat. <clears throat> but the sickness did not go. So I said, the prophet said I should fast for 14 days. I fasted in my own wisdom for seven days. I stopped. But the sickness did not go. So I decided since the sickness did not go, I said, let me fast for seven more days. When the fasting was exactly 14 days, God gave me a revelation. And I found myself, I will be praying for you, and I want everybody to say amen. I found myself in the idols, in the, in the altar of the idol of my community. And I saw two giant demons holding guns, and they wanted to attack me. And I shouted the name of Jesus. And as I shouted the name of Jesus, I saw a gun in my hand, and I shoot them. And when I woke up, it was as if, I've never been sick in my life. The victory came when I did what they told me to do. Babalola encountered Jesus when he followed the instruction of the Holy Spirit. I pray for you. Everyone whose sickness is as a result of an attack from demons, everyone whose sickness is as a result of altars in your father's house, Everyone whose backwardness, whose failures, whose, whose demotion, whose situation is as a result of sponsor attack from demons. I set that altar of bliss in the name of Jesus. Receive power to obey what God is telling you to do. Amen. And the next one God did was when Jesus encountered Babylonia in that revelation. God, Jesus also gave him another instruction. The instruction was were about five. I will mention about three. Jesus said to him, said, I want you to go and destroy all the kingdom of idols that is contending with me in Africa. That was the instruction God gave Babylon. I said, I want you to go and destroy all the idols, all the power that is contending with me in Africa. The question is, with what? And God said, just like Moses, I want you to go with your rod and destroy them. You know, let me tell you this. Babala, when he was walking as a stream roller, he always walked with a rod in his hand, made by him. He always go around with a rod. He used to Pack his caterpillar uh, in a particular church at Ikpetu, Ikpetu Modu. So when children will come and gather and be playing with his caterpillar, he usually used that rod to chase them away. That is what he was using that rod for. I know some of you have seen the picture of Babala. They always draw a bell, a rod, and a Bible. I'm talking about that rod. He, he had a rod made by himself, being a, a, a blacksmith. But when Jesus spoke to him in that dream, that same rod that he was using to chase people away from caterpillar became the rod of power in his hand. You know, it was the same thing with Moses. When God appeared to Moses, God told Moses, what is in your hand? He said, my rod. You know, he was also using his rod to chase animals, to chase cows, and, and that same rod became the rod of God. That was the same experience Babalola had. And everywhere Babalola appear, he will always look for the, the, the forest of devil. He always go there with that rod. Because when God speak, all that you have become power. Kali Adama say, when God selects you, even your clothes become power. Your face become power. Your utterance become power. 
We are, your presence in a place become power. Why? Because you are chosen by God. So God told him that he's going to use the same rod to become a rod of power. And the second thing God told him, God told him that Babala is going to be using Baal. I'm talking, I think I should be around number, number seven. I'm number seven now. He said, you are going to be using your rod to invite angelic hosts to your meeting, your bell. He said, go and get a bell. That's an instruction. And this thing happened in a trance. Go and get a bell. Whenever you ring that bell, it says angels will descend and walk with you. Many of you, you will just say it was a dream. But that was the same way God spoke to Babalola. And when he woke up, he believed in the revelation. He went and bought a bell. And everywhere you see him, always that bell and that rod. Because it was an instruction from God. And when, whenever he rang that bell, hey! They are angelic manifestation. What is it that God has told you? But you woke up, you said it is a dream. It is not just a dream. God speaks to me through dream. But whatever God says to you will not become power in experience when you don't act on it. God told him, buy a bell, he bought. So leave it for God. God will decide how to use it. Your own is to follow that instruction. Everything God told him, he did. Let me show you another one. And when God, God also gave him water, God told him in that revelation, he said, you are going to be using water to bless people, to heal people. He said, whenever you go, always bless water. And I, God, will use it to minister to people. And that is just what he did. He did not labor. In fact, at Okoye in 1930, people, about 40,000 people gather in that revival. But Balola did not touch any bottle of water. He only went and prayed for this, to the stream and people began to use it. You know, stress reduces when we simply obey God's instruction. Our stress as a minister of God reduces when we simply obey God's instruction. Let me give you a personal experience. How I miss God. Yes, let me share my experience. About three weeks ago, we were doing a program in our church. And it is uh, seven hours of praise. And I, I was supposed to minister. And because my session was to be the Holy Ghost session, where people are going to receive the power of the Holy Spirit. So in my mind, I made up my mind that I'm going to be laying hand on everybody. But deep within me, the Holy Spirit was telling me, just call out three people and pray for them. Call out three people and pray for them. But me, because I have passion, I believe everybody should receive the Holy Spirit and begin to blast in tongues. For about 40 minutes, I labor, laying hand on everybody and nothing was happening. And I realized it is better for me to just do what the Spirit of God says to me. After I have labored, I have stressed myself, I say, okay, wait, wait, wait. Let's do what the Spirit says. And I say, I need three people. That's what he told me in the initial state. Three people to just step forward. And three people step forward. I lay hand on the first person. Nothing happened. I lay hand on the second person. As my hand touched his head, it began, she began to speak in tongues. I lay out on the thought. She began to speak in tongue. Me. I said, oh, why should we, why do we always love to do what is in our mind against what is in his mind? That is a vital lesson to learn from my Yobaba Lola. He simply obey. When you simply obey, you walk in the miraculous. But when you struggle with the spirit, it's wasted effort. It's wasted effort. The Lord said, oh, I just want to visit three people. I said, I want you to visit all. You can't change God's mind. You can only take instruction and experience the miracle, miraculous. Hmm. Miracle happens when a man obey the voice of the Holy Spirit. Miracle happen. I see about 20 people. I, walk, I welcome every one of you. I want you to type all of them. When I say you should type, it means a message for you. Miracle happens. I want you to type. Miracle happens when a man obey instructions. 
God told Babalola, bless water, he did, and it becomes source of miracle for thousands of people. God told Babalola, ring your bell. Anytime you ring your bell, there will be angelic manifestation. And it was so. God told Babalola, take your rod, any forest, enter there. God will be with you. And it was so. When you study the life of all great men in the scripture, you will discover their main of instructions to Moses, to Joshua, to everyone. They are all men of instruction. Learn to obey instructions from God. That is my message. That's the purpose of doing this thing. It may appear foolish. When God speaks, it always sounds foolish. When God speaks, it's always senseless. What is the connection between ringing a bell and angel coming down from heaven? What is the connection between sick person and, and, and a flowing stream? If I at Okeo, in Asia, people drew the water up to the point that in the rainy season, July like this, the water dried and people were stretching water out of the mud. What is the connection between that kind of water and your head? In the scientific realm, it will even worsen your head. But in the spirit realm, because God has spoken, God has spoken, your own is just to obey. I have an example. We were supposed to do a night of a thousand hallelujah about four years ago, 2018. And I got to one of the Babylon last month. I will be praying for everybody at the end of this broadcast using the same covenant of this special day. Just wait. I will soon round up in the next 20 minutes. And when I got to that mountain, the Lord said, I'm going to be walking through water this year. He said, fetch the Babalola's water. And when you get to the Hallelujah ground, ask those people that are trusting God for baby to come and drink from it. Babalola has prayed to this water for more than 70 years, even more than 80 years ago. And I just obey. No stress, no labor, no, no effort added. I just drew the water. It was around 3 a.m. in the night. I drew it and I took it to the to the revival ground. Say, whosoever that is trusting God, God have said is going to give seven babies. I gave them no serious prayer. Four of them gave birth exactly nine months. You know why? Because God said it. So when God speaks, everything listen. When you obey instruction, you went into the miraculous. That is all the miracles that happened in Baba last ministry as a result of what God said that you obey. And the reason why we don't experience the miraculous is because we argue a lot with the Holy Spirit. I just give you a personal example. I said, no, I want everybody to receive. When the Spirit is said, I only want to visit three people. When, why we don't experience the miraculous in our generation is because we, we have, we have, bring logic and science to analyze the voice of the spirit anything that doesn't make sense to you is not to be acted upon because we have aligned with what science said you will not miss the next instruction from the lord in the name of jesus and the number eight instruction god gave to him is that he must never wear a cap on his head for the rest of his life if you are a Yoruba man in Nigeria, you know it is traditional, it is normal, it is cultural for people to wear cap, particularly during ceremony and when they are wearing their native dress. But an angel of God told Babalola, he said, there is a flower that has been used to adorn your head in the spirit realm, and that from today you must never wear a cap on your head again. He said, the crown of God's glory will be upon your head. So no natural or artificial clothes must come upon your head. I believe you don't hear what I said. The angel told him that the crown of God's glory, the crown of God's glory is upon his head. Can I pray for you? you no, know, Babalola have died for more than 60, 60 years. Many people are still seeing his images in their dream. I've seen it last year. Because God said, my stamp is on your head. Can I pray for you? Wherever you are, somebody called me today from Dublin. Yes, there I was even strong. I was trying to be okay. I didn't pray much. But somebody said in Dublin that he saw me in his dream. 
and I don't know anything. I'm in Nigeria. I've never even been to Dublin. I've never been to anywhere. But when God's stamp is on your head, your images become God favorite when He wants to intervene in the affairs of men. God told Babala, "Don't wear a cap because there is a crown of glory upon you." I want you to pray for yourself before I pray for you. Hold your head and say, God, put your crown of glory upon my head. When God puts the crown of glory upon your head, whenever God wants to walk on hearts, your image will be the one God will be using. I wrote a book. Uh, I, I can't remember the title. When I was talking about how grace men were anointed, and prophet Ezekiah of Christ Apostolic Church, the man who, was, who is currently sitting on Babalola's chair right now, saw in a vision, and he saw Jesus in the company of Ayo Babalola. They told him in that vision, we are going to send you on an era that are you ready to do the work? And Babalola in that vision, pour oil on him. And that's why when you see Ezekiah minister, you will know he was is using the mantle of the fathers until God appeared to you. You cannot appear to your generation until God speaks to you. Your generation cannot hear your voice, and that is what God did for Baba. I said there is a crown of glory. No man can give you; it's only God. I pray for you and I pray for myself. The same crown of glory that God used to decorate the life of Ayo Babalola, that crown of glory will be upon your head. It's the same touch, not anointing. You don't understand what I'm saying. The same crown of glory makes you a fearful being for the enemy. It means you are a carrier of God in a visible form. Let me tell you a story of Babalola. He was working in a particular town. And some people, some occultic people are also doing the occultic things. And they said, these people cannot see woman, and no woman will see this idol. And Baba Allah was in the ah, You can't kill a man that is carrying God. I pray for you. Karema Dikili. Moses came from mountain. No power, no woman could look at his eyes. It was the same crown of glory. It makes the presence and the glory of God to be visible in your life. That crown of glory is coming upon you. You become a threat to the enemy. You are not the one that will be running away from the enemy. When that crown is upon you, it is the enemy that will be running away from you. Because of time. The another, another instruction that God gave him was... God instructed him, you know, to go to his village in 1929. He said, go to your village and dress in, in a particular way. God told him, you must go to your village on a market day. Pay attention. Because when God wants to instruct you, he gives you detailed instruction. God told him, go to your village, Odrawa, on a market day. You must dress naked, no clothes on your body. You must use palm fund, palm fund, palm fund to cover your body. And you must use ashes to rub your face. You know, <laughs> that kind of instruction only few men can obey. To go to your own village on a market day without having clothes on your body. Only use leaf and palm leaf to rub, your, to, to cover your body. And of course, to use ashes to rub your face and begin to preach Christ. That was how God reduced him, brought him down, removed honor from him in order for him to carry God's honor and power. And he did. On a market day, he appeared in his village, not wearing clothes, but palm, palm front and leaves with ashes. And people were saying, oh, a madman has come to town. Come and see a madman. Come and see a madman. God dressed him like a madman in his village. But what was the result? The purpose why God did that was for him to cut the attention of his people. So sometimes when God wants to send you, he might give you some personalized instruction that, is, that appears stupid. But God has a purpose and objective. When God is dealing with you in a unique way, please don't question it. Just do it. It doesn't make sense for a man to go and preach without having clothes on his body. 
But that was the kind of instruction God gave Babalola, and he did. And what happened was divine empowerment. But if God is not leading you in that direction, I'm not asking you to do that. Follow what God says you should do and simply do it. Now, as I'm rounding up, the number 10, I'm going to stop at 12. Number 10, God led him to a far lie. Hmm. Define leading. Define leading. After the 1930 revival at Okoye, where it was recorded that 40,000, about 40,000 were attending the crusade on a daily basis for about six weeks, God now told him, go and be residing in one small village. And this one, this particular message is for someone listening to me right now. I was thinking, how can God heavily anointed a man and now direct him to go and be staying in a village. Ah, can I do such thing? After you have been empowered, Lagos is there, Ibadan is there, Ife is there, Overseas is there, many big, big towns, they are there. But God did not lead him to any of those. Even though they know him, they, everyone, it was one Ayobabala and one Nigerians at that time. And God told him, I want you to go and be staying at in Efo. If I did not even know anywhere that is called Efon, because when he was going to Efon, he took Efon in Efon in, in, in Quara State for Efon. So he first of all went to Efon. So when he was on his way, God said to him, I'm not sending you to Efon. I'm sending you to Efon. It was as at that time he inquired that where is Efon? Where is Efon? And they now led him that Efon is in Nikiti. It was a small town as at that time. Less than 5,000 people where are there are cities, and God did not lead him to city. Pay attention. If you are anointed, God can lead you to anywhere he wants. But whenever he leads you, that is where he will make your glory to shine. And Babalola obey. And the results of his appearance in Ephon, a small village, is still there to see today. Ephon has now become a city with one with some of the most beautiful edifice houses in the Kitty State in that town. If it was recorded that the day Babalola entered into a fire lie, that it was darkness in the from before. When it is 6 p.m., 6 p.m. in the night, the whole place is, is in darkness. 6 p.m., the whole place is in darkness. But the day Babalola stepped into a fire, the darkness disappeared. I pray for whosoever that can say amen. Every darkness that surrounded your life, light is shining upon you in Jesus' name. So just like Jesus, the Holy Spirit in Luke chapter 4, also after Jesus was empowered, also led Jesus into the wilderness. There is room there. There was Jerusalem. There are big cities. After Jesus was empowered, the Holy Spirit did not lead him to a city. He led him to the wilderness. Where is God asking you to go and work for him? And you are using your senses to calculate that there are no big men, there are no people that are financially okay there. You can't even be in the midst of where to do people and not be where to do by yourself. When you simply go to where God wants you to go. And the places where God will ask you to go may not be attractive, but follow instruction. He who directs you to the wilderness will make everything available for you in the wilderness. He led the Israelites to the wilderness. He opened heaven 40 years. They were eating without cooking because he led them. Go to where God leads you. Don't calculate with your senses. Do what he asks you to do and you will see it's miraculous. And Babalola got to a phone and a phone became a city. It became a revival ground again. Today, when you go to a phone, all, every minute, every day, every minute, people are entering the place, the tomb of Baba. I was still there about the last two weeks. Every, every minute, people are coming to that place to see the dry bone of a dead man. And they are still being empowered in that place. Just like the bone of Elisha raised men. The tomb of Ayobabala, God has used it to raise many powerful men in ministry. All our powerful geo, they do visit that place to pray. Because God led him and he's still there with him. Even with his dead body. You will receive divine instruction and you will not miss God in the name of Jesus. 
the tragedy, the tragedy of missing God. I've, I've shared this story several times. If God asks you to be in America and you are in London, even though those places are overseas, you will miss your blessing. There is a woman, a testimony of a woman that saddens me. I think I was on this Monday, the day she called. She said, God told her to go and be residing in Ibadan. But in, his, in a human calculation, she said, I can't live in Ibadan because there is nothing for me to be, to be doing there. So she decided to be living where it pleases her. So God now gave her another instruction. Okay, since you cannot live in Ibadan, I also want you to go to another place and do a revival. So he went, but he refused the first instruction, but he obeyed the second one. So he went, conducted the revival, spent 14 days of vigil. And after the 14 days, she went back to her base. And when she slept, God appeared to her in her dream, said, Daughter, I've heard your 14 days prayer, but you are not going to be answered. Say, I heard what you said. But I'm not going to give you the answer. And she asked the Lord, why will you hear my prayer and not answer my prayer? You know, there are two different things. God can hear and not answer, and not deliver result. And God said, because you despise my instruction, I told you to go and be living in certain place, but you reject me. Now you are praying. I'm also going to reject your prayer. You see, some of the reasons why your prayers have not been answered could be as a result of disobeying certain instructions from God. I did a program on this Monday, and after that, a lady just texted me, said, you are talking to me. And what did I say that day? I said, I said God said, stop challenging me wrongly. Stop challenging me wrongly. You have not done what I told you to do. Stop challenging me wrongly. He said, she has been challenging her about you have not done the last instruction given to you by God. You block your access to the miraculous by your disobedience to instruction. You block your access to your next miracle when you disobey that which he instructed you to do. When you study Babalola's pattern, everything God says he did and, the, and what follow is miracle. Instruction plus obedience equals miracle. Instruction, yes, thank you. I want you to help me type that. Instruction plus obedience equals miracle. You will continue to expect miracle and not see miracle when you despise instruction. Many times God wants to help you and he asks you to do certain things. Until you do that which God commanded you, you will not see the kind of result you are praying for. I pray for you. God will give you grace. Number 10. Number 11 now. One of the instructions God gave to give Ayobaba Lola that I'd like to share. All the books I've written about Baba Lola, they are books of instruction. How he got those miracles. God told him, yes, the Lord bless you, uh, Wendy. Yes, instruction plus obedience equal miracle. One of the things God told Baba Lola was, he was praying one day. He was praying. He was on the mountain one day. He was praying. You know, I've said it in the beginning, that when the Spirit of God speaks to you, it will not be convenience for you. But when you obey, there is an empowerment at the end of the equation. He was praying and the Lord told him to pluck some leaf like this and put it on the floor. And the instruction was, he must pray, sweat must come out from his body, until the sweat of his body become like erosion that can move this leaf from one place to the other. You think it's easy? Some of you have not prayed and a single dr a drop of sweat come out from your body since you have been praying. When I gathering, a revival gathering, and I saw some young people, I said, have, have any of you ever prayed and you are sweating? I said, no, no. But this, this that was the instruction God gave him. He said, you must pray until the sweat in your body can move the leaves from one place to the other. So it means the sweat must become like water coming out from body. It is not two hours of prayer. It is not seven hours of prayer. It is not 
17 hours of prayer. It's violent forms of prayer that can make the water in your body to, to be flooding like a river. That was the instruction God gave to him. What was God saying? God was telling him that you cannot be greater than your investment in prayer. You cannot be greater in ministry, in life, than your commitment to prayer. You cannot be much for God or you are much with him in prayer. I wish some people are just helping me to type. You cannot be much with God or you are much with him in the place of prayer. You cannot produce big miracle until you have a consecrated, a sincere, a focused, a consistent prayer life. You know, it is easy to quote Apostle Paul in Acts chapter 19. He said, from the hand of God was special miracle. But there is no Acts chapter 19. Without 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 18. I'm going to say that again. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There is no act chapter 19. The Bible says, in the hand of God, in the hand of Paul, God wrought special miracle. That even though anchorship from him were, were performing miracle, but it was not you don't get that kind of result by two, three hours prayer. When you read the secret of Paul. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 18, he said, I thank my God. He was facing a whole congregation, the church at Corinthian. He said, I thank my God that I pray in tongue more than you all. He was facing congregation about 500 people. And he said, cumulatively, all of you, I pray more than all of you. Is in the Bible, First Corinthians chapter fourteen, verse eighteen. It is that kind of prayer that produces special miracle. I pray for you, the grace to pray, because that is what God wants to release on this special day that Babalola passed away. When you mention Babalola, one thing that always comes to your mind is a man that prays. There is a place at the mountain of mercy, a Ruikiti. The place is still there. They said Babala pray in that place and his knee pierce the rock. It's not two, three hours prayer. Mm -hmm, it is not. The grace to pray and produce mighty apostolic results. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. And the last one that I will share before we stop. Instruction. If you want instruction, you must learn to ask God questions. That is the last thing that I'm saying. Because some of you will be saying, but what if God is not giving me instruction? What if God is not speaking to me? Do you know God has three types of relationship with us? God is a father. Yes, our source. God is our king, our ruler. But God is also a friend. When you see God as your friend, you can ask him questions. That is what Babalola did at a time when he wanted to start a ministry. You know, he didn't start ministry when God called him. When he wanted to start ministry, he asked the Lord, he said, what will be the name of this ministry you want me to start? And this is the conversation between Babalola and God in a book, Kaliasi Lima Shakada. You will have an encounter where God will speak to you like a friend. It happened to Moses. Moses spoke to God like a friend. It was even recorded in the Bible that God spoke to Moses just like a man speak to his friend. Exodus chapter 3 verse 11. God also spoke to Babalola just like a man speak to his friend. And I'm saying God can also speak to you in that form. But the question is how you must learn not just to pray, but to ask God questions. Not until you kneel down, not until you close your eyes. In your spirit, you just say, God, what are you saying? God, what? You must be conscious. The greatest blessing in my life is the consciousness that God is with me. That is the greatest blessing I have in my life. I am conscious all the time that God is with me. And when you have this consciousness, you can ask him, I say, God, what are you saying? Many people, many people across the world, they ask me questions. And I give them answer immediately. How do you think I get those answers? I ask God immediately because I know he's with me. 
I know God. This person wants to know this. What are you saying? That's not prayer. That is a friendly request. You must learn that. But Allah also had that experience. Getting instruction from God, you must learn how to ask God questions like a friend. The apostle, this one was written by Pastor Medayeshe. What I want to read here. Pastor Medayeshe worked with Ayobabala for 29 years out of his 30 years ministerial life span. So when this kind of man speaks, you know he's speaking authoritatively. And this is what he says about Babala. He said they are supposed to ask God what name they will bear, the name of the church. The Lord asked the apostle, how do we know what kind of work man engages in? Or what does a man do to be called a blacksmith? Those who work with plants we call carpenter. That's God was relating with Babala. The Lord asked Apostle, what is work look like? And Babala answer, he said, it looked like apostolic. They started a congregation called the Apostolic Group in 1929. God asked him. And when you are asking God questions, don't always expect answer. Many times God will use questions to answer your question. You must build that relationship where you know how God speaks. God asked, Babala asked God, what is the name of this commission? And God asked Babala, say, what is the nature of your work? He said, my work, the kind of miracles and the experience I have is like an apostolic work. And that is where the name Christ Apostolic Church came. It came from a conversation between a man and God. So I've been talking about instruction, instruction, instruction. And the conclusion is, you know, don't always wait till when God initiates a conversation with you. I'm being blessed with this message. Don't always wait till when God begins to speak to you. You can start a conversation with God. You can initiate a conversation with God. Say, God, please, I would like to speak to you. What are you saying on this matter? That is why you have the Holy Spirit. You don't need to run any after prophets. Yes. Start a conversation and he will answer you when you know he's there with you. And I would like to pray for you. The Bible describes a man who always despised instruction as a fool. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7. He said you are a fool. He said you are a fool when you despise God's instruction. Babalola became powerful. Babalola became famous. Babalola became what he was today because of one factor. He was a man that loved what God says and that obey what God asked him to do. So you can be greater. Because what the scripture says, he said, take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is your life. The Bible in Proverbs 4.13 said, instruction is your life. Your next miracle is wrapped in the pieces of instruction. Your next level is wrapped in the pieces of instruction. Until you do what God asks you to do, I don't expect you to experience the miraculous. Miracle is a summation of instruction plus obedience. I want to pray for you because that's the end of the broadcast, but I just want to pray for you the next two minutes. This very hour was when Babalola passed away, and that's why I'm doing this broadcast this very hour. People were crying. They were crying, oh, we lost him. We lost him, we lost him. For several times, Babalola would die like that and people would pray and he would come back. But for this one, for this one, they cried, they cried, they cried, the man did not come back. And that is the prayer I want to pray for you. You will not lose your children before their time in the name of Jesus. I have a strong connection with those people that can type amen. I am not praying for people who cannot say amen. Yes, I'm praying for people, for people who can say amen. They cry. They lost someone that they love. Anyone that is close to you, anyone that you value in your life, 
a mad this year, Kalema. Your child, your husband, your wife, they will not die in the name of Jesus. I said they will not die in the name of Jesus. Anyone that is close to you, they will not die in the name of Jesus. Do you know? Kalia Masia Kalisha Kadeke di Kirika Seke di Kadeke di Lima. His mother was still alive when he died. You will not die. Kade Masili Kalia that before your time. In the name of Jesus. I say you will not die in the name of Jesus. The second thing that happened was empowerment. The people that rush into his room. When he, his body, his spirit left his body, they all fell on the ground. They all received the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Ah, a dead man can be used by God to anoint the living. I've experienced it. God using the dead to anoint the living. When Babalola died and, they, and he died in a day, and they took his body to a far lie. The sweat that was coming from his body was very hot. He was sweating. Have you ever seen a dead man sweating? That is the way anointed people does. The whole year will be coming out from their body. So he was sweating. And a man saw that this sweat is not ordinary. And he went there, used his hand, rubbed Babalola's face, and used the hand to rub his own face. Instantly, he became a notable prophet in effort. Kaliada, Masilili, Shikiliada, Imama. If truly Babalola went to glory this very hour, and God is saying he's going to raise apostles across nation, he's going to raise men across nation. I use the covenant of this day, I pray for you. You will be the next one God is going to raise in your generation. Whatever your calling may be, maybe you are into ministry, maybe you are into business, maybe you are into profession. Babalola was the one God raised in his generation. You will be the one God is going to raise in your generation. In that work, you will be the one God is going to promote. In that place of work, you will be the one God is going to promote. You will be the one God is going to raise. You will be the one God is going to raise. And the last prayer is this. When Babalola died, people thought it is over for Christ's apostolic church. People thought it is over for the apostolic commission. But it was just the beginning. The moment he died, his prayer, God answered it. Do you know Babalola's prayer? When he was alive, he always prayed that God should raise men. God should raise powerful apostles. And when he died, God showed up mightily. And raise many powerful prophets and apostles in Christ's apostolic church. Not just in Christ's apostolic church, across the world. Across the world. Many of the GOs in Nigeria pass through the commission. They pass through the, apostol uh, the apostolic commission of Fire Babalala. And that is the prayer that I want to pray for you. That the Almighty God will visit you with that covenant. That the Almighty God will raise you with that covenant. That the Almighty God is going to raise you with that covenant. That the Almighty God is going to raise your children with covenant. That the Almighty God is going to remember the covenant upon you. When Babalala was about to die, I have it in a book here. I'm not making anything up. And these are not just my book alone. When Babala was about to die, they said he was praying for all nations of the world. And that's where I want to stop. The moment he wanted to die, said he was praying for all nations of the world. It means whether you are in Nigeria or not, there is a prayer over your head that has not come to manifestation. I pray for you. They say he was praying his last hour on earth. He used it to pray for all nations of the world. Wherever nation you find yourself, the same covenant that raised Ayo Babalola will raise you. That prayer he prayed in the last hour of his existence will find expression in your life. You will be Kalema this year, Kalema. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm seeing the anointing for his. Yes, thank you, Holy Spirit. He said, anointing for ease, anointing for ease. Where you have been struggling before, the anointing for ease will make things happen for you. 
where you have been struggling to make things happen. The anointing for ease will make things happen for you. Where you have been struggling to make things happen, to make economic end, to make impact in your generation, I'm seeing anointing for ease. You will begin to produce results with anointing for ease in Jesus' name. You have been struggling to get pregnant. Receive the anointing for ease in the name of Jesus. You have been struggling to get job. Receive anointing for ease. Everything you do from today that I do from today will come under the anointing for ease. I say everything you do will come under the anointing for ease. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I want to appreciate everyone that have taken their time to listen to this message. Every prayer that I've prayed for you, you will see the manifestation in your life immediately. I, I love you. I cherish your time. I value you that you are there because if you are not there, I will be speaking to myself. And I just want to encourage you to also share the message is for the global community. That's the first one. Again, we have written about three books about Ayoba Balola. The first one is Act of Power. We only have the print copy of this one. So if you want to order anywhere across the world, I'll, I'll tell you my number. The other two books, they are available in soft copy, in PDF. You can also buy them, but we need people who can make it happen. We want them in print like this. And we just need, you know, if God is leading you, to be part of that project that will turn our PDF to a printable material like this. We need about $2,000. $1,000 we print, $1,000 we print a thousand copy of this. So for the testimony of grace and uh, for voice of wisdom, three books that I've written, Act of Power, we have this one in print already. We have testimony of grace and we have voice of wisdom. We have men that want to partner with this project uh, so that they were available in prints and people will have access to this revelation. The Lord bless you. My GSM number, speaking from Nigeria, if you want to be part of it, or if you want to order for your PDF copy, is plus 234-8087-110224. going to say that again. Plus 234 8701 Hey, I'm not sure if I get it again. <laughs> Holy Spirit, 8701112224. That is the number. I'm going to write it on the post. Yes, uh, plus 2348711224. The Lord bless you. My spirit is praying for you. The Almighty God Himself will visit you tonight. The same covenant that worked for Babalola will begin to work for you. Make sure you are passionate about God's instruction and ask for grace to carry out God's instruction. Always remember, instruction plus obedience equals miracle. The Lord bless you.